Hello friends and welcome to another episode of the Urban Homesteading channel. If today is the first time that you are visiting with us, we want to extend to you a very warm welcome and invite you to watch our 400, 500 videos that we have arranged for your convenience in playlists as we are confident you're going to find something both entertaining and useful for your consumption. If you've been here before and you have not subscribed, what are you waiting for? Do subscribe. If today is your birthday, we want to wish you a very happy birthday. aspects when you buy uh, an older home is that the material is of good quality and the construction is of good quality but of course they are dated and we have this instance here in our bathroom where the main uh, shower is in really good shape but the color is really bad right so today we are going to redo this uh, shower and we are going to use a product made by Astorium. Rustolium. Yeah, that's what I said. Rustolium. <laughs> sure you did. <laughs> Rustolium tub and tile. We're and not, we're not sponsored. We're not sponsored. We bought this with our own money. And it is designed for this very purpose. It comes in three colors. It comes in white, uh, almond, and I don't remember the other, do you? I thought you would say it here, but it doesn't. Um, no, but almond is the color we're trying to get away from, so we right. may have chosen that one. We're going to do a fresh white. What we're trying to get off is this, which is a very good color match to what is in our sour, <laughs> actually. It says yeah. old and new. So. Yep. Yes. So this will, uh, it's a very inexpensive way to update something, and probably that would be a good solution if you flip homes too, right? Right, without having to take the whole shower... Uh, out and replace it that would be very costly and it's very inexpensive how much did it cost twenty three dollars mm -hmm. and that's supposed to do a, a full-size tub I'm not sure how to calculate the space for this uh, but probably one will do this as well right you're supposed to do two coats of this mm -hmm. so we're going to show you all the process and of course we're going to show you the before and after and let you judge for yourself Again, uh, this is the first time we are attempting this. We have not done it before. And we're going to take you along for the ride. So here's our before. We did start taping the... And we're going to tape all around here, you know, all the edges. The lighting keeps changing and making it look a little bit more yellow than it really is because it's actually an almond kind of color. It's that's, not dirty. That's a little more true to color there. It's not dirty. It's actually in good shape. Yeah, there's no cracks. There's no scrapes. There's no damage to it. It's just there. There's a good shot of the color. Uh, it's just an older color and kind of it makes it look dingy even though it's not dirty. Right. It is not. It just doesn't look as bright. Now, technically, you're supposed to take the the hardware off. We're not going to do that. We're just going to tape it. Because we have a reputation in this channel, we don't always follow the directions, right? Right. What directions? Rule breakers. Can we talk about the headlight thing? <laughs> <laughs> who needs directions? Distractions, who needs distractions? That's right. So, but if you want to do it according to the directions, you will need to remove all the hardware, you know? The door, the framing, everything. Right, but we're not going to do that because as it is an older thing, a lot of times when you take this off, you have a... A dickens of a time trying to put them back on. So I want to avoid that little problem. We don't need a dickens. We don't need a dickens. Or do we need a time? Oh, uh, yeah. All right, cool. Okay. So, so we're starting the sanding process. And we chose to use the 400 grit. Uh, sandpaper is coarser than the smaller the number. So you can use 400 or 600. 
Again, we chose to go with 400. And again, the notion here is that you want to sand the, the glossy finish so you will allow the material to adhere to your surface. It's much better. Oh, were you showing something? No, oh, just the residue, the, the powdery that comes off. Yeah. Whoop. And I think it will be a little different for its... So, here we are, and you can see a little bit the residue of the sanding process. And you can definitely see it there where the drain is, and you can see it on the blue masking tape. So we do have the fan on to take some of the things out so they won't be in our lungs. So I hope you can hear them through that. It's not a very loud fan, so I think that will be okay. So now that everything is um, masked and cleaned and sanded, we're going to get ready to actually mix the two part epoxy and, and start painting it. In general, it is not recommended that you use a brush for this application because it will leave brass marks that you will not be able to cover and will not look like it's supposed to. So using a fairly flat, what is the name? Low knit, or there is a name for the thickness of the pad. So using a, a fairly flat uh, roller is the best advice thing. So yeah. we are going to clean this, you don't want any of this residue on, but you don't want any water. So if you're really concerned about that, you can use a tack cloth. Uh, we are not, we're going to use a dry uh, soap towel, right? Disposable, of course. And we're going to do that. We're going to be right back. Carefully wipe all surfaces that you uh, use the sanding paper or block on. And when you're done, use your finger to see if there is any residue. And if there is, go over it one more time until you don't see any residue. And I'm doing this top to bottom too. So any dust that I wipe off falls to the floor instead of top yeah, that's, bottom up. That's also a good idea. So here is the time you want to take your time. Here's the time you want to take your time. Mm -hmm. Because this is a step very important in the final outcome of your work. So take your time, do it to your satisfaction. If you're not happy, go and purchase tack cloths and do it that way, which is better than not having to do the project again, right? Right. Before or after. Okay, with our uh, preparation finished, we are ready now to start using the material. We have purchased a little uh, paint tray and pan, roller. Tray, yeah. Mm -hmm. And we are going to use it for this process. And here now we are going to open our box and unbox it. And this comes in two parts. The first part is the activator or the hardener. And then there is a. Those are the only two things in the box. Looks like we need a screwdriver. This is very interesting. They really don't want this open. Mm -hmm. I've never seen that before. It has clips. Both of them do. Mm. Well, they right. want it to stay closed during shipment. Yep. So we're going to open them and we are going to start the refinishing process. Okay. Try to open this without hurting yourself. That's the most elegant thing to do. Woo! Careful there. Take somebody's eye out with that. Well. Yeah, I don't think you're going to get any of them in your glove. Because <laughs> they're just flying. It's going to be harder because it's smaller. Hey, hey, hey. They really did not want this to open by accident. I'm not sure that I can open it on purpose, actually. I'm afraid that will hurt you if I don't you're see what I'm hurt, doing. You're not gonna hurt me. I have to be able to see what I'm doing. Okay, I don't want it popping anybody in the face. Because one right. almost got me. 
So we need a stirring stick. Mm -hmm. And now for the first time, we'll make sure that the scent is the right color. Maybe you can put it over there on the bag that she has on the counter to protect it. There's nothing to protect. Uh -huh. And it is indeed white. Excellent. That's what it's supposed to be. And oh my God, it's got a powerful smell too. Yes, that's why I've turned the things on. Mm -hmm. All right, wait, and we're going... Wait. She's coming back with the stick. She's coming back with the stick. Mm -hmm. And we are going to empty the contents and they have left enough space. I mean, the design is good. So you can mix the two in this container, so. Don't spill it out the back. You're spilling it. What are you talking you about? You need to tip the whole thing over. It was running down the back. Okay. So let's stir it now. And I understand that it will be very watery, milk-like. It's not going to be thick at all when it is done. So not thick like a typical paint. Right. It, it is not a paint technically. When you're done, you're going to get a consistency just like milk. Well, it's a little bit more like cream. I don't know the difference and I don't know the guys. Cream is thicker. I don't know the, the guys will know the difference either. I do, because I was thinking it's not like a skim milk, which would be a super thin, very watery substance. This has got a thicker Rather than like whole milk, it's more yeah, of a cream. Yeah, it's more of a cream. But it's not paint. This is not the cooking channel, guys. <laughs> no, but we're just telling you the consistency difference. Right. And, and especially if there are any women who are looking or anybody who does cooking or whatever, they're going to know what that consistency is. And unfortunately, like. the, the directions don't tell you that. I had to do a lot of digging and a lot of reading in the restaurant inside to figure out information. Okay. Yeah, it looks like it's pretty good now and it's that cream consistency. So if you're pouring cream into something, that's what it's gonna look like. the Mrs. Wizard had the right idea with protecting the floor. This is very runny, which means that uh, when we pour it, it tends to want to go in the back. Can you start on the back so I can... And there it goes, the first level, level, not layer. You don't need to go over it again. You just do it one time and then the second coat. It's supposed to be a little ugly looking in the beginning. So the first coat goes uh, fairly thin. But already is an improvement, don't you think? Mm -hmm. It does stink. Is there a better, more polite way it to say that? Very uh, odoriferous. Odoriferous. Stinky. Yes, I think stinky and odoriferous are synonymous things, right? And for some reason, it makes our little roller swell in the end. We've not seen that before with paint. It's swelling on the tip. Isn't that what it's doing? It is. Okay. It's happy. It's a happy roller. Well, it's swelling on the tip. So if you finish, uh, when you finish, you leave it an hour before you do the second coat. Oh my God, you're gonna get high trying to do this project. 
and then you have to wait three days, right? Three days before you can get it wet. So we're going to finish it. We're going to get back with you when it is all finished on the first coat. And of course, then we'll get back with you when the second coat is done. One of the things we found is that the foam rollers somehow interact with the material and uh, they don't last long. How would you describe it? What yeah, it kind of, um, it just like lost all its body and it just went limp and expanded and just couldn't even hold on to the, the, the metal. Roller, yeah. yeah. So we purchased a smooth, a, a smooth surface. It has to be a smooth surface. Uh, roller that it is actually uh, not from the material that we had before, not... Uh, Oops, that's Spanish. You probably want the English. Yeah, that's okay. <laughs> so we're going to try this and uh, hopefully it works because this is the last uh, cover that we're going to do. Yep, last coat. Okay, so just let you, letting you know that if you are to purchase and uh, try to use the other ones, they don't seem to play well with this specific product. All right, and let's see how the second coat goes on. And hope that Mrs. Wizard will not get stuck on the first coat. And much brighter, right? Mm -hmm. And on this coat, you want any imperfections to be covered. You don't want anything sewing once this dries. So if you need to go over an area before it's fully dried, you can, because once it dries, then you're, it will be set to whatever it is. So as you're looking at it, especially when you're done, you can look at it and, and make sure. And here is our finished result. And as you can see, it is a definite improvement over what we had before. When you agree, love? Oh yeah. It's and really beautiful. It has like a very soft texture to it. And it, it changed the look of it, and not just in color, you know, it feels like an actual, I don't know what the material is, but... Maybe fiberglass tub, a fiberglass shower... But it doesn't make, feel like fiberglass anymore, that's what I'm trying to say. It feels more porcelain. Right. Yeah. And it definitely freshens up the look, it looks clean and new. And something like that uh, modernizes immediately your... Uh, bathroom. We have, and we're going to leave the plastic bag over the uh, faucet, not the faucet, sour over the sour head, because any water that might fall on this until it is totally cured will actually create create a blister. It's totally impervious to water once you it cures, but for the next three days we're going to to leave it like that, and of course we're not going to use the sour for that time. Well, friends, this concludes our episode for today, and we certainly hope you did enjoy it. It is our opinion that this is a very worthwhile project. One kit costs $23.78, so that's a sub $25 uh, process. In uh, full disclosure, we used a kit and a half, and I don't know if that's because this is a greater area or because this was kind of dark in color, darker in mm -hmm. color. Uh, but when we finished, it wasn't bad at all with, with just the kit. But it did have some areas that we felt needed a little more attention, right? Almost a third coat in some areas, yeah. Right. So we went in hand and did it. We did buy two kits just for this contingency because, unfortunately, it doesn't tell you how to calculate the square footage that it covers. It just says it's good for a bathtub. You know, I mm -hmm. think bathtubs are not all the same size. Mm -hmm. But overall, I think for the cost, now it does take some time to take, overall it will take three to four days because you have to wait between coats, you have to wash it very well with an abrasive and you have to sand it. 
Not in that order. No, but there is <laughs> there is a wait time that is making the project last longer than it that you really work on it, right? Right, but it's definitely worth it if you need a low budget renovation. And it really looks very good. And I was amazed. I mentioned it several times how it feels like porcelain. I mean, you know, before you touched it, it felt like plastic, like a, a surround tub, mm -hmm. right? But you touch it now, and and it feels truly like porcelain. It is a, a, a truly amazing transformation. We are not being paid or sponsored by Restolium. I say it incorrect, apparently. Well, but you said it fine that time. But we will definitely recommend this product. This is the first time we used it, so any mistakes you make, any bonehead errors, you saw them here with us. We have not used this project before, product before, but we think we're going to use it again. Right. One one note though to all of our audience out there and our members, you know, it really smells very strongly. You have got to have so. you've got to have some ventilation going on because if you don't, your head is going to swim. And we had both that fan venting directly to the window and the overhead fan uh working. So we had two fans in essence working. Mm -hmm. Still it 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 is indeed a very very strong odor. Would you consider that a negative? I don't know. I mean, um, it can be if you're sensitive, especially, but it's really heady. So if you don't ventilate, you're going to probably get, you know, pretty nauseated. Um, it's definitely doable if you have ventilation. Yes, and I think uh, the, the end result, it's really good. Again, now it is just the waiting game. You don't do anything, but you cannot use it for three days, right? Right. And hopefully the, the smell will dissipate enough. Yeah, oh, I'm certain it will. In any case, I hope you enjoyed this episode. This is a fun and easy way to upgrade or refinish an uh, older looking bathroom or bathtub. Mm -hmm. And uh, we are going to do our bathtub that also has a surround over it. So we'll probably need two or three kits for that, right? Mm -hmm. At least two, yeah. I think a, a normal size or a smaller size bathtub, the kit will easily do. This was much more area. Mm -hmm. than a, a normal bathtub would be. Uh, I'm extremely pleased with it, right? Yeah. And again, we chose to um, tape or mask. You can also remove the hardware, right? Right, and if especially you would want to do that if you were changing the hardware because it could be slightly different size uh -huh. and then you would have a gap. So uh, you can do it either way. I didn't think that it did any harm that for us masking instead of removing things. Mm -hmm. It looks, I mean, when you look at it, it looks like it is a, what do you call it, a standard? It doesn't look like yeah, a it looks plastic like it surround. Yeah, it always that way. You really yeah. don't see anything uh, negative about this. So overall, I think this is a worthwhile project. It is probably the least expensive way you can uh, update your surround of tower or bathtub. Mm -hmm. uh, it doesn't take a lot of skill, but it does take uh, patience, right? Patience. Uh, right. You need to make sure you, if you uh, mask it, that you mask it very well. Yeah, tape it really well, right up right up to the, the edge of where you want, are going to apply it. And because the, the way people that had the house bef before us did things, if there is any caulking anywhere, you have to remove it before you do that. And I think this is probably because it has some element that melts it, the way it melted the the, the roller, you know? Yeah, kind of disintegrated a little bit. Right, yeah. so uh, we're going to cook afterwards because there's really no cook where they should be, like the door surrounds and everything, you know. Mm -hmm. So we didn't have to, to follow this step. We didn't show you this step. We didn't do it because there was no cooking anywhere around this. But now when it is finished, not now we're going to go back and, and cook all the areas. And and that also, if you in the edges made any little mistakes, that will cover it. Mm -hmm. The, the cocking will take care of all those little problems. Mm -hmm. We hope you enjoyed this uh, episode of the Urban Homesteading Center. Center? We became a center now? <laughs> Channel? It's the fumes. Yeah. <laughs> fumes. We're high on rustolium, you know. Uh, if you did, we ask that you give us a thumbs up. If you didn't, the other button works as well. Share, like, subscribe, and let us know what else you would like to see in this channel. We do plan to do a lot of home upgrading and improvement models, right? Isn't that what you call it? Mm -hmm. So stick around if you have any of those. And if you have anything specific you want to see, 
definitely leave us a comment or send us an email and we are going to do it if that's something that makes sense in this house. From uh, the wizard and Mrs. Wizard, we want to wish you a great week and we're going to see you Wednesday with another short episode. Farewell, friends.